What's going on, Kyle? We're talking horses tonight. How we doing? Special episode, the Belmont. Love it. Love it, love it. I uh, I was thinking about going to this on Saturday, and then they read, I read that they were uh, implementing the strict uh, vaccine passport oh, regulations boy. for everyone. They're doing the old <laughs> tyranny. Very American. <laughs> <laughs> trying on the old tyranny hat here. Yeah. I was like, all right, I'm not going to support that bullshit. You're right. Um, but we do have a small field this week. Uh, only got eight courses. Yep. And it looks like that there are none of them that um, ran in all three races. Which right. Which is interesting. That is. No chance for the Triple Crown, obviously. That was yeah. uh, Nick's last uh, race. And uh, by the fact that Medina Spirit is was uh, disqualified, <laughs> yeah, Bob that, Baffert, that little uh, tidbit, yep. Bob Baffert's, Baffert's having a good week. <laughs> suspended for two years <laughs> because of that. I Failed can't the wait. Second drug test. Can't wait to hear the excuses. Out of Baffert, it's going to be unbelievable. I know it's going to be fantastic. Cancel culture at its finest. <laughs> yeah, just cancel culture. They don't like winners. The fucking libs. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Obama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Ugh. All right, but let's get into the field here. We started off with uh, Bourbonic is in the one post. Uh, Todd Petcher, Pletcher is the trainer, and uh, Ken Carmuch is the jockey. And we liked him uh, for the Derby. We were on Bourbonic as one of our guys we, we did. Liked. We did. Before the Derby, he won, uh, looks like, three of the last four races. And now he's going to face a field full of horses that uh, competed in the first two legs of the Triple Crown. Bourbonic seems like the type that will be able to get the 12 for long distance, but he would love to improve enough to beat three Derby horses who beat him in that race. And the one one slot is a great slot here um, at the Belmont. Yeah, and sitting at fifteen to one right now, that'd yeah. be a nice, tasty payday if he if he could pull it, it out. Sure would. Uh, next up, we got Essential Quality. He is two to one. Trainer is Brad Cox. Jockey is Luis Sayez. Um, this is the class of the field. Um, he won five or six career starts. He won the Breeders' Cup in 2020, um, and he was fourth in the Derby. Um, he's the favorite for a reason. Um, at two to one, I'm going to stay away from from the horse. Yeah, and uh, I I'm kind of with you on that one. Not a ton of not a ton of uh, value in essential quality here. I don't know. I, I got to think that the Exotics are not going to pay that well. I did hit a huge payday on the next horse, Ron Bauer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had him in a – well, I had him straight up at uh, 12 to 1. I think I threw like 60 bucks on him. And then uh, I had him in a try, a boxed trifecta with um, – Midnight Bourbon and Medina Spirit, that hit. That was another, like, 900 bucks. So I think I walked away from Freakness uh, about $1,500 richer. And then that became and Emax I, money. That, yeah, turned <laughs> $1,500 into, like, 50000 So <laughs> yeah, let's let it ride. Let's go. Yeah, I definitely like this horse uh, in here. I don't know how well he's going to do on the longer track, though. Uh, but he certainly... Is prove, he proved to be a great chase horse. Oh, yeah. And chase horses are going to do much better in the longer uh, track here in Queens, New York. Yep. But um, he's, he's definitely going to be one of the guys that I have money on, just if for no other reason that he won me a ton uh, the last time out. So oh, I yeah. definitely have some love for him here. I agree. Got to gotta have him at least in some... Uh exotics um that brings us to hot rod charlie coming in the four slot he's seven to two uh trainers doug o'neill and jockey is flavian pratt 
Um, not really sure about Hot Rod Charlie at that price. What do you think about that? Uh, not at seven to two, but yeah. I think he's he's got a decent shot. He skipped the pre uh, which that yeah. that could be a good thing, honestly. Um, he came in third at the Derby. Um, yes, and Flavian Pratt was the winning jockey of the Preakness. Right. Um, so that's pretty big. So yeah, seven to two. I don't know if I'll take him to win, but I will throw him into some exotics. Uh, he's got a pretty good track record. Second, um, two essential quality at the Breeders Juvenile. Um, so yeah, he's definitely a horse to watch. I just don't love the odds on him. Yeah, for sure. And then we go to the Japanese special, <laughs> France Go to Ina. Let's go. Uh, yeah. I. Th- what did he finish in the Preakness? It was uh, seventh. He was. Yeah, but he was he was with it um, from the start, and then he kind of faded towards the end, and that is not what you want on a long track. Someone who can't even do a mile and three sixteenths. <laughs> right. So. Uh, I think he's thirty to one for a reason, but uh, yeah, not much to <laughs> say about this one. I mean, no. I think it's the uh, running the opposite way in Japan that is throwing him off here. Yeah, I I, I agree. Uh, I don't really he want can't him. go left. Thirty to one is probably pretty get close to accurate there, but yeah, stay away from him. Next, we got Known Agenda. Uh, he's six to one. Trainer Todd Pletcher. Jockey is Irad Ortiz Jr. And I love the combo of Todd Pletcher and Irad Ortiz. Um, he was ninth in the Derby, so he disappointed there. Uh, his biggest career win was a Florida Derby at Gulfstream. Um, he's the son of Curlin, so. Uh, that's he's got a good lineage, um, and I like I said, Todd Pletcher and Irad Ortiz are two people I, I will trust. And six to one is pretty good odds. Um, I'm liking known agenda to maybe bounce back here. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Maybe throw him in a couple of boxers. Mm-hmm. Maybe some some long uh, some superfectas if you got you know four horses. I mean, you got There's basically. Only eight, so. uh, yeah. Right, there's only eight, so you're gonna have to take uh, some longer, longer odds horses, and uh, so that brings us to Rock Your World, sitting at nine to two, and the trainer is Johnny Sadler, jockey is uh, Yoel Rosario. This is a great horse on uh, dirt, and I do have some notes on him here. He. Um, He beat Medina Spirit on dirt uh, not that long ago, Very and Woodford Reserve Woodford Reserve is backing him. So gotta like that. Gotta like that. Yeah. <laughs> and and so the thing is, if so, this is a pace setter horse, and if he can push the pace and dictate the pace, I think he's got a good shot to win. And especially because that seems to be his only path to victory. Right. Yeah. He's not a chaser. He's not a chaser. He's, he's a pacer. <laughs> so if he can go wire to wire, obviously he's got a great shot. Yeah, and at nine to two, it's not bad. Nine to two, worth throwing a couple bucks on him. Yeah, it is. And that brings us since to, we're since we're up a billion dollars already. Yeah, that brings us to our last horse is Overtook. He's twenty to one. Trainer is Todd Pletcher again. Jockey is Manny Franco. Um. I don't have much of this um, about this horse, except he is the son of Curlin. Um, I, I don't, I'm not looking at this horse. Are you? No. He did have a win in Aqueduct in uh, December, and he took second in uh, Withers and third in the Peter Pan. That's about all I know on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and those those last two were Grade Three races. Yeah, so, so don't love them here. There's only eight yeah. horses, so you got like you said, you got to take some risks somewhere. 
Um, but I'd rather take Bubonic at 15-1 to than uh, the 20-1 to odds in over, with Overtick. Than Overtick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you want to build, uh, build a couple exotics and... Uh, and then we'll we'll do uh, we'll do Floyd after that. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I think a pretty good box try. So I think we have to have essential quality in the first one. Yeah. I think probably what I would do skeeters, <laughs> um, is. Uh, is do one with uh, essential quality, mm-hmm. Rombauer, and and maybe a Rock Your World or Known Agenda. I like it. I, I like Rock Your World there. Yeah. And then, well, I would go. All right. So the first one is the two, the three. Two, three. And the seven. And then I would do one. Um, I, let's, I would go three, four, and maybe six. Three, four, and I six. I mean, you could really... Yeah, I don't... I don't know, like, what the payouts on these are going to be. Though, right. There's only eight of horses, so I you know. could theoretically, like, make... You know, you can make like three decent boxes and probably hit one of them. Right. I'm liking for a long shot uh, try box, the one, um, the six, and the three. One, six, and three. So, Burbonic, Rombauer. And known agenda. That's going to be a pretty good payout. Yeah, I like that as, a, lo- as a long shot. Yeah, might not be, might not be nine hundred bucks, but you could always throw. I mean, we're probably going to have to throw like do some like ten dollar tries, right? Some crazy like that in order to get anything worth right collecting the next day. But yeah, I think. Uh, there's possibilities out there, even though there's eight horses. Kind of a bummer. Yeah. It is kind of a bummer. But I feel like um, I feel like when American Pharaoh won, there were like six horses. Yeah. But that was the hype with American Pharaoh, though, was driving that. Right. Everyone was too shook for him. Yeah. Was driving that Yeah, race. we were at that one. We were. And, and that was pretty wild. Because that was, yeah. like, the easiest win for a Triple Crown I've ever seen. My cousin was also there as a poor man. <laughs> Mr. Falcone? Yeah. Mr. Thriller? Yeah. All right, but. so as far as... Do you want to take a shot on a super? Let's do it. All right. So... I think probably my better shot of hitting was the uh, the three, seven, and four, and I think to that add two, maybe add the two. Yeah, add essential quality. I think you're right, which sucks because you're taking almost all the favorites. But I mean, hey. Yeah. They're the best horses. Right. And could you fucking imagine, though, if France go to Eno 1 at 30 to 1? <laughs> Sports Haven would no longer be closing. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. France go to Eno. Uh, I don't think anyone has money on France go to Eno. No. Probably not. But n- All right. neither will we. Let's <laughs> leave it at that. Because we're just rambling. Uh, we'll do uh, a quick break and then break down the uh, Floyd fight and the and we, Emax's uh, weekend plays. All right. <laughs> 